uh, Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones described this psalm as one of the most beautiful pieces of writing anywhere in the world. And of course, it's more than that. But it is a beautiful piece of literature in its own right. Psalm 107, verse 1. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gathered out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a desolate way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. And he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city for a dwelling place. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. And then down to verse 23. Those who go down to the sea in ships, who do business on great waters, they see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For he commands and raises the stormy wind, which lifts up the waves of the sea. They mount up to the heavens, they go down again to the depths. Their soul melts because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wit's end. Then they cry out to the Lord in their trouble, and he brings them out of their distresses. He calms the storm so that its waves are still. Then they are glad because they are quiet. So he guides them to their desired haven. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. I'm going to talk to you about Sazra. I'm conscious there are some of you here who know Sazra so well. You could be speaking and I could be sitting down enjoying listening to you. Is anyone brave enough to tell me what it stands for? Either the old version or the new version will be fine. <laughs> Soldiers, Airmen, Scripture Readers Association. Very good, well done. Um, now, the RAF now call Airmen and Airwomen Aviators, so you'll see that phrase used. Um, you won't find that date in the history books, but it's a great date for Christians in this country. In 1825, the rules were written for when a soldier joins the army. Because of the faith of a single sergeant in Woolwich Barracks a few years earlier, because of one simple act of faith, in 1825, King's regulation stated, everyone joining the British army must be offered a prayer book, must be offered a Bible. But there was a problem. Christians were obviously overjoyed that soldiers were given a Bible. Any idea what the problem was? They couldn't read. Most of the soldiers couldn't read. So a group of Christian officers got together and they said, right, what we'll do is we'll pool our resources, we'll put our money in a pot, and we will employ Christians to go on the bases to sit down with soldiers and read their own Bibles to them. What shall we call them? We'll call them scripture readers. There were scripture readers uh, back in 1838, which is we, Sazer regards as its birth date, uh, the, the, the job of a scripture reader was written down in 1838. Sazer regards that as its beginnings. There were scripture readers at the Crimean War. Uh, there were scripture readers uh, amongst the poor in London, visiting the, the workhouses in the 1870s. Scripture readers in the Boer War, First World War, and so on and so forth. In fact, in World War II, there were 200 scripture readers towards the end of the war. 170 men and 30 women. There still are scripture readers today. There's one of them. Um, they have all served. 
So in order to have a license from the military to go onto RAF or army bases, they have to have served themselves. On their lapels, it says scripture reader. A soldier, when he meets somebody new, first thing a soldier looks for is rank. When he sees scripture reader, he doesn't know whether to brace, to salute, to bow. He often will ask, what is a scripture reader? Um, now, most people assume because I work for SASRA that I personally have served in very dangerous military missions. So just to clarify, I've been a teacher all my life. And the most dangerous thing I've done is teach four-year-olds. Um, I was unarmed, but um, it was dangerous, I thought. Um, but if you are working directly with the soldiers, you have to have served. If you're part of the backup team for SASRA, we come from a whole variety uh, of backgrounds. Um, our mission hasn't changed since 1830. I think that's really a great encouragement because perhaps I'm, I hope I'm not being unkind here or unfair. There are a number of wonderful Christian works in the 19th century that are now, have now become social works. They've lost the gospel. But Sazra's mission hasn't changed. It's simply that. It's that all serving personnel will hear the gospel whilst they are in uniform. That's it. And just like any local church, we'll help in our community in any way we can. Scripture readers will help in any way they can to get alongside men and women of the armed forces. But they're there to be salt and to be light and to share their faith. Of course, the need is very great. We do a lot of our work amongst that, those age of young people, 17 to 24 year olds. The army in particular recruit from the most challenging, the toughest, the most difficult parts of British society. Many of the, the recruits are already, sad to say, in the last chance saloon of life. That's a very sad thing to say, isn't it, about Britain today. But they, they are in very tough, often inner city areas. The normal course of life for them and their peers is some kind of addiction, crime, because they've got to pay for that addiction, prison down the line. Or they might just make it in the British Army. Now amongst the recruits, now not the army as a whole, but amongst the recruits, there are fewer Christians than you will find in Yemen, Sudan, or the most unreached parts of the world. Isn't that sobering? And they're in this country, and they're young people. The average reading age of many of the army recruits is under 11. They've never been to church, never seen a Bible. Their family backgrounds are so dysfunctional, dysfunctional is not an adequate word to describe them. So it's a tremendous need. And that's Lord Dannett, Christian, was head of the British Army a while ago. Um, and you can read what he says, but essentially saying, we're asking these young people to risk their lives, but do so without sharing our Christian hope is something of betrayal. So how is it in secular Britain today when the waves of secularism seem to be flowing across our land? I'm sure they've reached Chartridge. Um, how is it that we are allowed to have men and women to go onto bases in uniform, to do Bible studies, to have prayer meetings, to give out New Testaments? Um, how is it that we're allowed to do that? It's got a lot to do with the uh, young people I've just mentioned. You see, the army are very concerned. They're gonna, they're gonna train these young people. They're gonna find themselves in conflict zones. They're gonna be shot at. Um, they're gonna capture people who shot at them. What's gonna happen next? They know what's gonna happen next. They'll revert to type. They'll revert to their backgrounds. So they're very keen they should be taught basic, moral, Christian principles. They call it the moral component of fighting power. Every life matters, including the person who's shooting at you. Self-control, discipline, comradeship. Who's going to teach these principles to many young people who they've never really, if they've heard it, they haven't listened. Who's going to teach that? Well, those scripture readers, they could teach that. And so a number of our scripture readers teach the moral component of fighting power and are there because the army regard them in particular as a good influence, a good moral influence to point these young people um, in uh, 
in the way of uh, morality at least. Why does Sazer exist? Again, it's pretty simple really. Um, Sazer only exists because you and I are not allowed on the bases. The local church can't go on the base. Now there are church buildings on bases and uh, often they're not used, sadly, but you and I, we can't just go on the bases. Sazra goes where the local church can't go. Um, the Sazra workers, in essence, are missionaries uh, going into an area uh, where the church itself is not able to go. So I thought I'd share with you just a couple of examples. We've currently got about 16 scripture readers. We hope that's going to go up to 18. I'll mention a little bit more about that um, later. So I'll just give you a couple of examples. We are tremendously proud, weren't we, as a nation, of these men and women at the late Queen's Jubilee celebrations, the coronation, the late Queen's uh, funeral, etc. Um, they work out of High Park Barracks. Um, it's the King's Royals Reg Regiment. The truth is, though, that um, many, many of the young people working, uh, particularly in the ceremonial season, they find it incredibly stressful, incredibly challenging. High Park Barracks is, a very, is, a, is, is not um, an easy place to work. It's very challenging. And there's a great concern uh, uh, for mental health um, by the army in these places. It's a real concern. Um, so we have Josh, who goes into High Park Barracks. He was a soldier. Uh, an ex-para uh, in Afghanistan. He's written a great book, actually. And he works for us one day a week. He's a pastor in Woolwich. And one day a week, he goes into Hyde Park Barracks. He has lots of great opportunities. Just thought to share a little bit of what he does. Just to give you a little example of it, he has lots of one-to-one -one meetings where he's seeking to counsel young men in particular. Some of them are a very, a very difficult place. Uh, he meets up with them regularly. He started a WhatsApp um, group, a messaging group. Every day he sends out a Bible verse and a commentary on that Bible verse, like a little, a little daily devotional. Um, he has about 70 people at least. There's probably more now. Um, it's a couple of weeks old. Um, he only started about six weeks ago, something like that. Has 70 uh, people having that Bible verse and message every day on their phones. One thing that the army, of course, are very concerned about, as I've mentioned, is, is, is mental health. They have health fairs. At a health fair, you'll have psychologists, clinologists, doctors, and so on. But you'll also have Sazra talking about spiritual health. There's Steve and Mike. Uh, Steve is on the left behind the table. He's at RAF Northolt. I'll mention him in a minute. Um, and Mike is at Aldershot. They didn't move from their table during the morning, not because they're lazy, but because there's a steady flow of soldiers wanting to find out, wanting to know a little bit more. Um, soldiers aren't uh, indifferent to these things. They, they're interested very often. Um, they want to know. Sometimes they never heard anything about Christian matters before. Um, and so they want to know. Um, here's a little um, clip. This is Josh speaking. So Josh is a high park barracks. Hopefully you'll be able to hear it. Well, I think there's a beautiful scripture here in Isaiah 26, verse 3, that says, You keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, because he trusts in you. Ultimately, as Christians, we know that the, the key to perfect peace is having your mind fixed on the Lord, focused on him. And there are many really good mental health coping strategies um, in the world. Some of them have been tremendously helpful to many people. Um, but from my perspective as a Christian, I think the ultimate um, help that we have to keep our minds in perfect peace isn't to try and create our own peace, but to go to the giver of peace, the God of peace. And so um, our job as a scripture reader is yes, to help people, yes, to give them you know, general good uh, uh, advice that, you know, uh, about how to cope with various things, but our aim is to go beyond that and to point them to the God of peace and to introduce them to the God of peace, um, because ultimately we believe that uh, he is the one who can keep us in perfect peace. So not too far away from you is uh, RF North Holt, and Steve is at RF North Holt. Looking very cheerful there, isn't he? Steve's not been there for long, and he's had a, a number of, of excellent opportunities. Um, just, to, just to mention, um, one of the key part aspects for Sazra is to have a good relationship with the chaplains, 
because we don't work for the chaplains, but we do work in the same space as the chaplains. And to have a chaplain who is supportive and encouraging of our scripture readers is tremendously helpful. And Steve has a very helpful, supportive uh, chaplain at RAF North Holt. Um, one thing that's been a big encouragement is a coffee morning. I know it doesn't sound too much, but they haven't had a coffee morning uh, where there's coffee and, and I believe there are cakes as well um, since COVID. And so the, 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 uh, the, the commandant of, of the base uh, was very, very keen uh, that Steve should get this up and running. It gives him a lots of opportunities as well to, to meet with soldiers and just to chat and get to know them because that's part of what his role is is to seek to befriend soldiers. He's doing a weekly Bible study. He also gets, as well as soldiers, he gets an RAF. He gets non-military as well, because RAF has quite a large, an aspect of it where it's just serving the public generally. So, um, so he can get as many as eight people coming along to that. And he has some prayer needs though, which I've mentioned, family accommodation. So I'd like to move closer to North, North if he can with the family. That's Tian in the middle and Tian's uh, M.O.D. Linen. All of those young men have been, become Christians in the last year. About the seven actually become Christians. There are five of them there. Um, and they're tremendously, it's very humbling to meet them because they're tremendously bold in their faith. Um, a number of them are leaving M.O.D. Linen, they're going to other bases and they're starting up Bible studies and prayer meetings on the other bases. One of them said to Tian, Tian, I want you to, I'm getting married, he said. I'd like to invite you to ask my stag do. So Tian was a little bit nervous for obvious reasons and said, right. He said, yeah, I've booked a chalet. Right. I'm inviting all the guys from the Bible study. Right. It's in Bulgaria. Right. And why do you want me to come? Because, he said, I want you to come and give us seven messages from the Bible of what the Bible says about marriage. Seven messages on biblical marriage. Isn't that incredible? Um, that these young soldiers um, who previously perhaps um, would, would never have thought for a mi in a million years of doing something like that as a celebration, a pre-celebration of a marriage. Um, quite incredible. So I thought very briefly then, just thank you so much for your support and prayers for Sazra. I just thought I'd, I'd give you a little bit of an update. Some of you will know this, um, of our, our, our biggest prayer needs currently. We had the news uh, only a few weeks ago that King Charles will be our patron. That her late majesty was our patron, as was her father, as was her grandfather. And we weren't sure that, the, um, that this would continue. Does it matter? I think it does. Um, it's really helpful to, for Sazra to be able to, to say uh, the Commander-in-Chief is our patron. Because there are plenty of groups who don't appreciate Christians going onto bases, giving out New Testaments. And they're not slow to make that known. So that's uh, a great encouragement. Our great desires for more scripture readers. We've got two interviews in the next week or so. Um, we're aiming to get to 25 scripture readers. Uh, in the next few years. Um, it's uh, a challenge financially for us, um, but it's also a, uh, a great opportunity. Um, and we've already recruited two or three this year already, and we're seeking. But to be a scripture reader, you have to have served. You've got to love to share your faith, but you've also got to be wise. You've got to be wise um, in how you conduct yourself um, as well. Lots of things happening with mental health issues and a lot of our scripture really is seeking to help soldiers with that. There are lots of opportunities. One of our scripture readers in Catterick phoned up HQ and said, have you got any New Testaments? They said, no, but we can get you some. How many would you like? He said, I think I'll need about 25,000, um, which is a bit sobering, isn't it? How can you help us? So continue to pray for us. Uh, we do rely on gifts of, of Christians uh, in order to employ our scripture readers, in order to make everything work. <laughs> Volunteer to support us. Really, that's more about giving out, making sure that folk in the church are aware of our prayer requests, giving out ready mix, rep magazines, and so on. Thank you very much. Uh, for listening and there's a little table here if you don't get our magazine I know many of you do there's some on the table um, there's all sorts of a few other little bits and pieces as well